Reading maketh a full man. Active reading is an essential skill every man must acquire. The ability to interpret, decipher, and critique ideas from mere words alone not only makes an individual more articulate, but more powerful in contrast to those who neglect it. Indeed, men who do not read daily become functionally illiterate and, lacking an independent thought, are easily manipulated by the sophistry of lesser men, or worse, lesser men of great authority. As was once noted by the French philosopher Voltaire, anyone who has the power to make you believe absurdities has the power to make you commit injustices. A well-read society is a well-informed society, so long as its citizens remain cognizant of their own biases and can distinguish fact from fiction. However, in today's fast-paced internet age, information and, unfortunately, misinformation from news outlets and other media sources can spread across the globe in seconds. Anyone with access can discover what's happening in the world in real time and draw their own conclusions. The more that information becomes spoon-fed via social media and other audiovisual mediums, the fewer people will choose to read it instead. One could argue that the electronic dissemination of information infantilizes future generations' capacity for critical thought and ability to maintain focus. Even worse, it keeps men ignorant by stifling their curiosity to delve further into complex subjects, as evidenced by the common internet speak abbreviation TLDR, too long, didn't read, which became widely used in the early 2000s. Today, the TLDR ethos continues to reign supreme in how we think about and engage issues. The importance of active reading, thus, is not just about learning new words or staying informed on current events, but engaging in the dialectic, one of the foundations of Western thinking. One of the habits men gain through active reading is the discipline of truth-seeking, an essential skill in today's oversaturated marketplace of ideas. Sifting through ideas to determine what are factual and what are hearsay can be a daunting task, which is why many will offload the work either by accepting ideas that confirm their biases or by appealing to experts who can confirm facts for them. Why? Because most people don't do well with information overload. Bertram Ross, who coined the term in his book, The Managing of Organizations, wrote, Information overload occurs when the amount of input to a system exceeds its processing capacity. Decision makers have fairly limited cognitive processing capacity. Consequently, when information overload occurs, it is likely that a reduction in decision quality will occur. This reduction in decision quality, I argue, also extends to individuals who seek what is simple and emotionally engaging over what is complex and intellectually challenging. Readers are often the latter of the two. Those who actively read by remaining open-minded while also cross-referencing other sources can decide whether or not what they are reading is worth considering, or if they should take it with a grain of salt. In other words, when one reads with the intent to learn and understand a topic, despite how they may feel about it, they will gain, in return, a clearer version of reality. By contrast, men who are not readers will be considerably disadvantaged. These individuals will likely be too rigid in their thinking, making them short-sighted and unable to see other perspectives, or too flexible, making them indecisive and unwilling to take a position on anything. Consequently, they will also lack, to a greater or lesser degree, an objective awareness of who they are, creating false notions about themselves and becoming poor judges of character. Even worse, they will not be as effective in distinguishing between profundity and sophistry, making them susceptible to all forms of suggestion. Thus, those who do not read daily with the express purpose of training one's mind will fail to exercise it properly and without a sufficient amount of intellectual stress applied to one's thinking, one cannot produce original thought. Therefore, reading books, whether classical literature, history, science, or art, is one of the best ways to engage one's mind with new ideas and perspectives. 
However, reading as a habit for its own sake can be an effort in futility. One must not read simply to memorize and regurgitate information, but rather embody it by applying what is practical. As was once similarly expressed by Stoic philosopher Epictetus, Don't just say you have read books. Show that through them you have learned to think better, to be a more discriminating and reflective person. Books are the training weights of the mind. They are very helpful, but it would be a bad mistake to suppose that one has made progress simply by having internalized their contents. Books are the whetstones used to sharpen dull minds. By reading them, one should develop a deeper understanding of the human condition and a more expansive view of reality. It should never be an end unto itself. Instead, it should be a voluntary process of constantly striving to discover oneself and the truth in all things. Thus, men who read with the expressed intent to better themselves will gain four advantages. 1. A broader spectrum of knowledge to see multiple viewpoints on a subject. 2. A more objective view of themselves and others. 3. A way to train the mind by challenging one's thinking. 4. A sense of self-reliance in one's cognitive ability and less over-reliance on appealing to authority. The first advantage of active reading keeps men always one step ahead of others in their thinking. By developing a broader spectrum of knowledge to see multiple viewpoints, one can draw from numerous sources and use them to express one's ideas more clearly. In the case of intellectual sparring, one who can speak the ancient languages of logos, ethos, and pathos not only can offer constructive criticism, but also present a quality counterproposal to opposing views. A common tactic of non-readers is that they will often criticize without ever giving a counter-argument. Yet, despite this, they believe criticism alone is enough to dismiss another's claim. What they fail to recognize is that anyone with a rudimentary grasp on the subject in question or who has an axe to grind can point out logical fallacies, but one who is well-read should be able to perform the bare minimum of at least having a decent counterpoint not just pick out contrary details in an argument. Readers will do this naturally and, as a result, become the primary influencers within the intellectual spheres of society, exchanging ideas and reinvigorating the lost art of public debate. Expanding one's mind by exposing it to the elements of historical wisdom and insight gives one the mental fortitude to weather any intellectual storm. Therefore, read everything. Read perspectives you agree with and disagree with. Read fiction and nonfiction. Read classic books as well as esoteric ones. The goal should be to find what interests you while learning and embodying new ideas. The second advantage of active reading is developing intellectual honesty by striving to obtain a more objective understanding of oneself and the world. However, it is essential for one to be open-minded about contrary ideas lest one risks losing true understanding. As German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche warns us, the worst readers are those who behave like plundering troops. They take away a few things they can use, dirty and confound the remainder, and revile the whole. Active reading requires active thinking, and, more importantly, a willingness to accept new information while remaining skeptical. For example, Analyzing literary characters and different historical figures will teach you about their psychologies and what motivates them, whereas one who does not study human behavior will project their personality onto others and assume that what drives them must be the same as what drives everybody else. From this assumption, they will interpret those they disagree with as either unenlightened, misinformed, or even downright evil, simply because their view of human behavior is too narrow and thus lacks nuance. Those who ascribe to a limited, subjective worldview will have difficulty navigating and overcoming life obstacles because they believe those difficulties exist not as the result of how things are, but as a failure of society for not living up to its ideals of how things ought to be. In other words, objective reality is secondary to one's lived experience. While it is true that one might read an author's insights and agree with them, 
cementing their subjective beliefs even further, an active reader who is intellectually honest will not be satisfied with only one person's interpretation. Thus, they will be inclined to read more and, in the process, begin to see things more objectively. Active readers see reality not as shades of black and white, but as gradients of gray. They understand the is-ought distinction and the fallacy of binary extremes, seeing both the bigger picture and the finer details of every viewpoint and avoiding any form of caricaturing. The third advantage of active reading is the ability to challenge one's thinking by trying to understand contrary views. The West, in particular, has a rich history of ideas that dates back centuries, many of which are now the foundation of its laws and morals. However, before an idea can be worthy of consideration, it must withstand criticism. Greek philosopher Plato was a progenitor of the dialectic, which comes from the term dialogestai, meaning to converse or to dialogue. He argued that knowledge can only be discovered through a series of questioning and cannot exist in isolation as self-evident because one must determine what one means by said knowledge. In other words, Abstract concepts like good and evil can only be understood when one asks themselves what is good and what is evil, rather than regarding it as self-evident. Reading is designed not only to entertain, but to enlighten, by putting the reader in a position where they are confronted with new ways of thinking. Expanding one's mind requires one to develop a deep understanding about not just how one thinks about a particular subject, but how others think. If you can see both sides of an argument, then you can see the entire chessboard, making strategic maneuvers and staying one step ahead of your opponent. Readers will always maintain the home field advantage compared to non-readers because they know the terrain. They have studied whatever subject they've devoted themselves to and can argue their position with relative ease, whereas non-readers quickly become lost in the conversation. To challenge one's thinking, thus, is to go beyond one's limited scope by seeing alternatives one may not have considered. Therefore, actively reading opposing views as much as supporting ones is a necessity. A layman simply listens and regurgitates information, whereas an expert painstakingly researches and articulates their thoughts according to what they have studied. The last advantage of active reading is increased confidence in one's ability to think clearly. Readers are exposed more often to new concepts and ideas in every book or article they read. Continuous exposure reinforces and engages one's mind to think critically about the subject they're researching and the multiple views surrounding it. Abstract ideas that were once difficult to grasp become second nature over time, and with it, a renewed sense of self-reliance. Thus, reading is not just for entertainment or learning, but reassuring oneself in their thinking. If one can explain what they've read in their own words and can make distinctions between dissimilar viewpoints, then they can dissect arguments and interpret new information more efficiently. Reading naturally helps with understanding rhetoric, which is a critical skill one must have when confronted with media personalities and government authorities who assert unsubstantiated claims. In other words, reading helps develop a healthy dose of skepticism. Ignorance can only be bliss in the unlikely event that heaven on earth is made possible. Until then, one must remain informed of current events and mindful of public figures who wish to influence rather than inform others of what is happening in the world. Remember, neglecting the mind leads to ignorance, much like neglecting the body leads to obesity. Readers stay informed so they can draw their own conclusions instead of appealing to authority. By contrast, non-readers are not only uninformed, but can become easily misinformed by someone they believe to be a reputable source. Rather than taking the time to read about a particular subject, they will instead use an authority figure as their personal mouthpiece. Of course, one can and should consider authorities, but a dependency on them indicates either a strong bias or lack of individual thought. Reading is designed to make you a free-thinking individual, the more you read and learn how to juxtapose different ideas, the more you will gain a clearer picture of reality, no matter the genre or type. Nonfiction may be best suited to explain factual information, but even fiction can express ideas about human nature using complex characters and plots. The most optimal way to gain insight into the world and oneself 
is by reading or experiencing it firsthand. Since traveling back in time is not possible and visiting another country is not always an option, reading becomes a more viable way in understanding history, art, science, and literature. There is a stagnancy that perpetuates itself when one abandons reading for distraction. Today, we are bombarded with addictive smartphones and other forms of media, and all that is required is one's passive attention rather than active focus. Literacy has dropped because reading requires one to engage with the material, to comprehend it by paying attention to details. Audiovisual content from smartphones and TVs are easily consumed with little to no thought. However, reading is the exact opposite. One must form images through words and interpret them accordingly. Today's increased bifurcation of left and right politics and compartmentalization of various ideologies indicates a broken culture. Counter-realities grow as a result of ignorance, or worse, propaganda. Reading and critical thinking are essential in order to combat the West's decline. Higher illiteracy is pushing us further away from public discourse to empty arguments that achieve nothing except more division. Without developing reading as an essential skill, members of society will, over time, become dull and ignorant. Their gullibility makes them easy targets for manipulation by more cunning individuals. They will accept proposals at face value, becoming more compliant with the status quo rather than maintaining a healthy degree of skepticism, ultimately harboring a slanted worldview favoring their biases rather than accepting a more objective reality. These, plus many more, are the consequences of illiteracy. A reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. The man who never reads lives only one, noted the critically acclaimed author George R. R. Martin. Indeed, the narrow-mindedness of non-readers are a natural consequence of negligence begetting ignorance. And the only way for one to be nuanced in opinion is to widen one's scope and range of knowledge, encompassing the thoughts of many rather than harboring a select few. Men must continually read and educate themselves not only to become well-rounded learners, but to arm themselves with knowledge that will aid them in becoming successful, whether financially, artistically, or academically. Reading is not just about reading books. Reading teaches you how to read people, conflicts, and events. It instills independent thought by giving different perspectives to filter one's thoughts through. In short, it allows not only one to understand concepts and ideas, but embody and empathize with those who espouse such ideas, even if one might disagree with them. Reading, ultimately, is about connection. It is about discovering that your thoughts are not yours alone, but the thoughts of many who came before. Voices both prominent and obscure, echoing visions of the future, imploring others to listen. Do not ignore those voices, nor neglect what they have to say. Rather, lend an ear by exploring whatever written works they've left behind. So, pick up a book and don't stop. Keep reading.